You remember how we said, things want to keep doing whatever they're doing. If they're at rest, they want to stay at rest. If they're moving in uniform straight line motion, they want to keep doing that. Well, it turns out some things are more determined to do that than others. Some things want to stay put more than others and it's harder to get them to move, right? And that determination, how much something wants to stay doing that, we call mass, right? Now, mass is usually defined as how much stuff is there somewhere, okay? But if there's more stuff, then there's also more resistance to being moved. I don't want to go anywhere. And you'll have to try a lot harder to do it, right? So, um, everything wants to keep doing what it's doing. Some things want to keep doing it more than others, and that means they've got more mass, okay? Now, there's a lot of implications to this. For instance, if you've got the same force, right, acting on two objects which have different masses, right? Same force, so this is newtons, okay? And you've got a light object and a heavy object. An object with not much mass and a lot, right? This guy's not putting up much of a fight, right? Whereas this guy is. So you're going to get different accelerations as a result. Okay, different accelerations. Now come back to those up to the table that we did, right? And um, we had this right down the bottom, right? Or pretty much down the bottom. Okay, F equals MA. So let's consider an actual example. Um, a specific amount of force. So I'll call it F1. So it's a constant. Then I've got a specific object, right? So it has a specific kind of mass. And then I've got a specific acceleration that results from that, okay? Now, if I choose a different object that has a different kind of mass, then a different acceleration will result, right? Now, just look at this for a second. Because everything here is constant, right? I could take something like this out of the equation and it would still be true, right? It's just for a specific value. Now, have a look at this. There's some insight in here if we rearrange it. For instance, if I divide both sides through a little bit, right? For example, do this. It's the same equation, but it tells you something different, right? Have a look. Think about this. The ratio between these two masses, right? For example, suppose this was the heavier object and this was the lighter one. More mass here, less mass here, okay? What does it mean for these guys, right? Well, these two quantities are inversely proportional. Can you see that, right? As I make one object heavier, right, it's going to accelerate less. So that's what you get from these two ratios. And it's exactly equal, okay? Different accelerations, but it's not just random. It's not just arbitrary, okay? So, um, oh yeah. Um, you can think about this, not just from this kind of point of view, but think about it like this. Um, I wrote this, right? Okay. Now, let's just suppose the mass actually, let's just make that a variable. Who knows what it is? Okay. So, if I now do a similar thing over here and divide through, if I have something like this, constant force, okay? Some mass that, I don't know, you decide what you want, okay? And then the acceleration that results. Can you see what's going to happen as I vary m? Can you see what's going to happen? If this force is some constant and I make m super small, a very light object, okay, what happens to acceleration? It increases, right? Because when you make the denominator of a fraction small, you make the whole thing big. And vice versa. If you made something astronomically heavy, like literally astronomically heavy, okay, then it takes up, you know, this same force is going to hardly make it budge at all. Does that make sense? So you can see how we're digging more into the equations and what they mean than just, okay, can you use it and punch stuff into it, right? 